20 years ago, hundreds of asylum seekers drowned on a small boat trying to reach Australia from Indonesia. The 2001 Civex tragedy remains subject to claims of a cover-up, while the circumstances around its sinking are still unclear. It happened as the Howard government hardened its stance on asylum seekers ahead of a federal election. Now, a new court case may provide fresh information about what happened. Our Queensland correspondent, Stefan Armbruster, has this special report. For those who will never have graves, this memorial in Canberra for 353 mainly Afghans and Iraqis who died on a boat known only as Civ X. They drowned 20 years ago at sea after leaving Indonesia, the first major and worst asylum seeker boat tragedy on record for those trying to reach Australia. The late Amal Basri was one of just 45 survivors. More than 280 of the dead were women and children. Coming just after the Tampa and Children Overboard Affairs, a Senate inquiry into how this could happen cast no blame but found it is extraordinary. A major human disaster could occur in the vicinity of intensive Australian operations and remain undetected until three days after the event without any concern being raised within intelligence and decision-making circles. The inquiry exposed the Howard government's top secret Operation Relax to monitor, disrupt and stop boats beyond Australia's territorial seas, a forerunner to the Morrison government's sovereign borders. Absolutely there was a cover-up. As I say, a cover-up of the nature of the Australian involvement in the people smuggling disruption program in Indonesia, which basically set up the whole voyage of this ship which was doomed to sink from the outset. Former Australian Ambassador Tony Kevin blew the whistle on then Prime Minister John Howard's claims Civex sank in Indonesian waters outside Operation Relax's surveillance area. Something went seriously wrong in the information chain in Australia's border protection With system. evidence the vessel was... Way out in the Indian Ocean, in the Australian maritime surveillance zone and in a zone where Australian ships could have very readily and easily gone to the rescue. Following the Tampa standoff in August 2001, when the government refused to allow 430 rescued asylum seekers to set foot in Australia, the Howard government hardened its policy on asylum seekers, introducing boat turnbacks. Civex sunk during the 2001 election campaign, a week before Mr Howard delivered his famous line. But we will decide who comes to this country and the circumstances in which they come. Australia's then Immigration Minister was Philip Ruddock. He had introduced temporary protection visas, denying refugees in Australia family reunion rights, blamed by refugee advocates for pushing people to attempt perilous boat journeys as a last resort. Look, I, I don't look back and say what we did brought this about. Um, so I don't feel personal culpability in relation to it. it. doesn't mean I don't feel very much for the loss of life that has occurred. He adamantly rejects claims of a cover-up. Um, when you saw all of the evidence about it from very senior and very experienced public servants, um, I think it's uh, unreasonable to question the judgments that they formed. About 15 years ago, two people were convicted for people smuggling involving the Civex, one in Egypt and one in Brisbane. Now, another case here may shed some new light on what happened. Two decades on, Iraqi refugee Maytham Radi has been extradited from New Zealand and will in November face court in Brisbane charged with organising groups of non-citizens into Australia, related to the Civex. But today, October 19, marks one of the darkest moments in Australia's history of asylum seekers. Stefan Armbruster, SBS World News.